Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, we're in the kitchen again today. I thought I would bring you along if you have an instant pot for those of you who have one and have had one for a really long time, or maybe you're new to the whole instant pot thing. I'm just still kind of fairly new to it myself. My aunt gave me one, she had two and she didn't need to, so she gave me one. So I've got my instant pot out today. We're gonna make homemade turkey broth or you can do chicken broth with chicken bones. Either way, it's the same process. Um, I recently pulled a turkey that I had out of my deep freeze in the garage. I pulled it out, I thawed it out because I found I had two in there when I inventoried my freezer. And it really, one of them, at least one of them needed to be baked to get out of my freezer. Um, and since it's really hard to find chicken right now, I went to Sam's yesterday. I could not find frozen chicken breast at Sam's. Went to Kroger, could not find frozen chicken breast at Kroger either. I don't know what the deal is. So I'm kind of glad that I did go ahead and pull that turkey and I baked it the other day and pulled it off the bone and we've been eating on it. So I've got all the meat in here and nice, I mean, it was more full than this. We've been eating on it. So I've got all the turkey meat in here. We're probably gonna eat a few more sandwiches, things like that. I might throw a great big salad together. We have big chunks of turkey meat in the salad. Um, and then I'm gonna put what's left of that in the freezer to pull out for another time. And then I, as I pulled all that meat off the bone, I just grabbed a big bowl and I put all the skin and the bones in my bowl and I just stuck it in the refrigerator. Just cover it and stick it in your fridge until you're ready to use it. And so now we're gonna, I didn't have time to make the broth the other day. So I just set those to the side and now I'm gonna uh, pull out the instant pot and the carcass for lack of a better word. And we're about to get going. So grab your instant pot if you have one if you don't um i know there's other types of pressure cookers out there that's not instant pot brand i'm pretty sure the process is the same and i will show you how to make homemade broth that is pretty much for free i mean i don't know about you i go through chicken broth like the boxes of broth all the time it's a staple in my house so yes, you can buy it, and yes, I do buy it. I do keep it on hand for times when I'm just in a pinch and I don't have any, or maybe all of mine's frozen and I forgot to set it out to fall or whatever. But it is really nice to stock up when I do something like a hen or a turkey, I do go ahead and make broth out of it. So if nothing else, it'll be in the freezer. And when Thanksgiving comes, if I need extra broth when I go to stir up dressing, I've got it, and it's from a turkey. So let me put this up and we'll get started. Okay guys, all you need to make broth out of either chicken or turkey, either one, is the what's left of the skin, the bones, the carcass. Um, after you've pulled all the meat off, you need your Instant Pot or your pressure cooker. You need a colander when it's time to strain and a bowl to strain it into, or some sort of a container. And you need your um, veggie scraps. I keep veggie scraps. I just keep this bag in the freezer and just continue adding to it. So in this bag there is celery, there's carrot, and there's onion. There's carrot peels, there's the ends of carrots that I chop off, ends of celery that I chop off, onion in there, there's some onion. And so we're going to put this with this in here and then I'll show you how to do it. Also, when you're using your Instant Pot, for those of you who don't have one or have just gotten one and you're just getting started, you do not want to use the Instant Pot like here. You do not want to use it under a cabinet because it has to release steam. So if you, I mean, I guess you could use it like underneath the vent hood. If you have a, a flat glass top like this that you could turn your vent hood on, but I even don't prefer to do that. I do it here like this where there's no there's no cabinet above, you'll see as the steam escapes because that's not good. So make sure you're in an open area when you use your instrument. Okay, I hope this is a good angle. I think this is probably about as close as I can get for you to see. So hopefully you can see this. So you've got your instant pot. I'm gonna take the lid off and you have your inner pot and you have the little basket tray thing. I don't know what they call it. It sits in the bottom. For this, you can either leave it in there or you can take it out. Doesn't really matter. I'm gonna take it out just for the time being. Make sure your pot is clean and dry. It's not 
It cannot be wet. So if you do take it out and wash it, make sure the outside of the pot is completely dry. It has to be dry. And then if you will notice, turn around where you can see, there are the max fill line. That's where we're gonna fill it to with water. So there's no measuring of any water or anything like that. So it's really easy. All you're gonna do is you're gonna put your, your bones in. They're cold because they've been in the refrigerator. Some people say pull all the wings and the fat and stuff off. I mean, not the wings, the like what little tiny bits of meat are left in the skin. Eh. I just basically want to make sure I do have all the bones in there because the bone marrow or whatever is where the, all that goodness is gonna come from. And you don't wanna put all of them in there because you don't wanna overfill it. You gotta leave room for water in the veggies. But the good thing is with a hen, it usually takes all the bones because they're smaller. But with a turkey, you could probably do half of it and make two batches. Just gonna put bones in there. Like this. Here's a good one. It's got a little fat on it. We're not, I'm not cooking dinner tonight. Tonight is leftovers night because we need to eat what's in the refrigerator because I do not throw food away. So since I'm not cooking dinner, I'm making use of my time today. So today we're gonna use the Instant Pot and make broth. And then I'm going to use the Instant Pot and make a whole bunch of rice for Willow. She's having some tummy troubles, but when I put supplement her food with rice, it seems to really help. And I'm tired of making a very small amount every single day. So we're just gonna do some in the Instant Pot all at one time, portion it out and stick it in the fridge to make my life easier. Okay, that's probably enough veggies, I mean bones. So see, that's gonna leave enough for another batch. Okay, so I'm gonna move this over here, out of the way. Get some of the grease off. having grease on my hands that makes my hands itch really bad. I have really very, very sensitive skin. Okay, now we're gonna put veggies in there. You can see there's carrot pieces, ends of onions, celery. And this is basically free because don't you normally throw this in the trash? Don't you normally throw this in the trash or this part of the carrot in the trash. Don't you throw the bones in the trash. So instead of throwing them in the trash, why not put them in here and water is basically free. Turn your instant pot on and then you have broth that you did not have to go buy at the store. Now at this point, if you want to add some seasonings, you know, maybe some thyme, or rosemary, any of those things, you, you can do that. This is where you customize it. You make it to your liking. Try to get some of this air out. Get back in the freezer. You make it however you wanna make it. I am not going to make it like, put seasonings in it because like I said, this way I can, um, well, I am gonna put salt but not a lot, just a little bit. So I am not gonna season it any more than just a little bit of salt. That way it stays kind of bland and neutral so that if I'm making dressing for Thanksgiving with, with this broth, it doesn't taste like rosemary and all that stuff that we don't put in our dressing. The only thing we put in our dressing is sage. So I don't want it 
seasoned a certain flavor, if that makes sense. But you do it how you want to do it, how you like it, because it's customizable to you. So now we're going to get some water. And you want to use cold water. And we're going to fill it up to that max fill line. See that max line right there? That's where we're going through with the water. So you see the veggies didn't come all the way to the, to the line, but that's where the water is going to go. A little bit more. There we go. All right, so then all you have to do, you got to put your lid on. And you're going to close it to lock it. And then you're going to close the venting. So right now it's on venting. So you're going to close it to seal like that. And then it says, I have to write my instructions down. High pressure for 120 minutes. So we're going to do pressure level. I have to remember how to do this. Pressure cook. And it's on high pressure for 120 minutes. All right. So two hours is 120 minutes. So that's what we do. And it will come to pressure. And yeah, so now it's kicking on. And it will come to pressure. And then the, when it comes to pressure, this little thing is gonna pop up and then it will start its cooking. And then once it's done, you need to just leave it alone and let it release the pressure all by itself naturally for at least 30 minutes. So you've got two hours and 30 minutes from right now before you're gonna do anything else, okay? And then at the 30 minute mark or after, you will come over here and you will flip this to release, but there really won't be much steam left because it will have released most of it already. And at that point, we'll show you what to do. All you gotta do is open the lid and strain it out. Okay, so I just beeped, so the two hours are done. So all we're gonna do now is completely just leave it alone for at least 30 minutes. And then this little valve right here, it is spitting a little bit and has been the whole time. So this whole house, whew, the whole house smells like broth, which is lovely. It smells better than smelling like dog. So in 30 minutes, this is just going to keep naturally releasing. In about 30 minutes, um, we will just flip this from here to venting to let out whatever is left. And then this little pin right here that you saw before that was down in there, now is up because the it is sealed but as it releases the pressure that little silver thing will drop and then we will be able to turn it and then open it up and see what we've got so be right back in about 30 minutes okay so it's been 30 minutes or a couple minutes past the th this little pin is not dropped down yet but it's okay now to go ahead and release what's left of the pressure now remember I told you it needs to not have a cabinet above it. So we're just gonna very carefully move this over. If you can see the steam. It's not a lot because it's already released most of it naturally. So while this releases, we're gonna get a bowl and the colander so that we can strain it. Okay, so now I've got our in, our, in the sink here, we've got my colander and we've got a bowl. And I just set it in here just in case of a mess, okay? Now, I don't know if you can tell, but the little pin has dropped. So that means it's okay to carefully open the lid. Unlock it. And we're going to open it. Get all that liquid dripping in there. You don't want to waste any. I'm going to set this on the other sink. It's kind of hot. And I'm going to get a 
towel. We're just gonna lift this up and we're gonna pour it over here. If you have cheesecloth, which I don't have anymore, I'm out. I would line the colander with some cheesecloth. We're just gonna have to make the best of it. Do this carefully so you don't splatter hot liquid on you. Look how rich it looks. veggies. Now we can throw these in the trash. I'm just going to set this right over here. On top of that. And look at this. Look at that broth. Mm, it smells so good. I'm gonna go ahead and let it cool. It is way too hot to handle right now. I'm gonna set it to the side and I'm gonna let it cool for a few minutes and then I'm gonna get it in some freezer bags and I'll show you how I store it. Okay, the kids are down here. They're getting their dinner. Um, and now that I've got this washed, we're gonna put it back together and we're gonna make rice in it. Now it might, this rice might smell or possibly even have a little bit of a flavor of the turkey broth, but that'll be okay. I mean, it's Willow. She would probably actually like that, um, but it won't have any of the fat because I've just washed all the pieces with John dishwashing liquid. So all of that will be um, gone. So we're gonna dry this off. I told you the outside of the pot has to be completely dry. You cannot put it in there wet. This towel does not smell good. And when you wash your instant pot, you have to take the little seal part that goes in here out and wash it too. And I've yet to figure out how to not make it smell like broth. This thing. I have scrubbed it with Dawn. I don't know. If you guys have an instant pot and you know how to make this not smell like chicken or I guess fish for those of you who eat fish or do fish in it however how do you make this rubber seal thing this thing how do you make it not smell like whatever you made in the instant pot all right so rice When you do rice in the Instant Pot, you do not have to use this as much water. So normally if you do it on the stove, it's like one cup of rice to two cups of water, right? Not in the Instant Pot. You only have to use one to one ratio. So we're gonna put two cups of rice in the Instant Pot. And four cups of water. I mean, two cups of water. Same amount of water as rice. So one cup. Two cups. Fluff it with a fork. We're just kind of stir it around, make sure it's kind of evenly distributed in there. Put your lid on. And then 
you're gonna seal, not venting, you're gonna seal it, make sure the valve is to seal. Okay, and then it is pressure cook, just like we did with the broth, on high, just like we did with the broth, only this time it's only four minutes. And it's already set back to two hours like what it was for the broth. It doesn't reset itself. I guess maybe if I had unplugged it and plugged it back in, it would. Um, so now I'm having to hit the down button to go all the way down to four minutes. All right, four minutes. Leave it alone. It's going to take about 10 minutes to come up to pressure for the little thing here to valve to come up. And then once it's to pressure, it will pressure cook for four minutes. It's turning on. And then at the end of the four minute cook time, you will let it natural. Sorry. Sorry about that. You will let it natural release on its own for 15 minutes. And then you just finish by turning the little thing to release, let it finish releasing, and then take the lid off and fluff up your rice and you're ready to serve it. At that point, all I'm gonna do is uh, portion it out in little portions for Willow and I'm just gonna stick those in the refrigerator and then when it's time for her to eat, I'm just gonna pull one out, dump it in her food bowl, break it up with a fork and put her food on top of it and that'll be so much easier than me blending it on the stove every single time it's time to feed her which gets really old. So I'll see you in just a few minutes when the rice is ready. Okay, so it's been 15 minutes since the rice um, has been off and depressurizing naturally so we're gonna leave it just for another cute couple minutes i'm showing you what i've done with the broth so i'm taking a ladle and i'm measuring out two cups of broth and then i am labeling quart size bags and then i open them up and i stick them down in this mug yes my hands are clean like this I'm trying to do this with one hand Pour it in. And I try to get all the air out, and then I pull it out, and I get the rest of the air out off against the countertop and lay it flat. So you can see I've got one, two, three, four. This makes five, plus this will probably be another two cups worth. Let's see. Look at that. Almost exactly. And I don't really need that, so I'm going to trash that. So that means I have four up there, five, six bags. Sorry, Willow is wild of two cups each so that's 12 cups of broth and remember we only did half of it so now we're gonna get the rice we got our broth all done out and now we're gonna release the pressure of the the little pin has already dropped so there's not a lot of pressure but we're gonna go ahead and release what release what's left and then open this carefully fluff up the rice with a fork and i have some containers here to portion it out into so that we can get it in the fridge once it cools down a little more. Oh, see, it's done. No more pressure. But always lift it carefully, though, because you don't want... There is steam. Perfect rice. Look at that. So what I'm gonna do now, see there? Yo, that thing is hot. So now I'm going to flip it up. I could have doubled this. I could have done four cups of rice and four cups of water. That's probably what I'll do next time. This was definitely easier. So let's go back and talk about the broth for a second. So out of that, it was a 13 pound turkey. It was a smallish one. It may, 13 pounds may be big to you. To me, to my family, it's a small turkey for Thanksgiving every year. My family 
always does like 20 to 25 pound turkey, depending on how big my mom can find one or who I find or whoever's cooking it that year. Um, we try to go for like the 20 plus pound turkey. So a 13 pound turkey wasn't huge, but it was a good amount. So out of that 13 pound turkey, I don't remember what it cost. It was probably like, I think I paid like $14, 14 or $15 for it. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what I paid for. It was like 14 or 15 pounds because it was like 99 cents a pound or something like that. So out of that turkey, I got that bag of meat that I showed you in the refrigerator, which is not all the meat because it was, we'd already eaten on some of it. And there's no way you can eat it all. I'm gonna put some of it in the freezer, fridge. Then I got three quart bags of broth out of the turkey pan itself when it came out of the oven. So that's six cups of broth right there. Now we just made out of half of the bones and half of my veggies that I've stored up, instead of throwing them in the trash, I've stored those up. So now out of th half of those, I have gotten 12 cups of broth. So now after I go and get do the other half, after I do the, this rice, I'm gonna finish up the other half of the bones and the veggies to get it out of the fridge. I'm tired of looking at bones. Get it out of the fridge, go ahead, do one more um, instant pot like I showed you of broth and get it done. So by the time it's all said and done, I should have this same amount of broth. So this is 12. The next round should be another 12 cups. That's 24 cups plus the three bags is an extra six cups. So that's 30 cups of broth. You do the math on how many quarts that is. Um, but that's a lot of broth and it didn't cost me anything. You can can it if you have jars and you have the canning um, pot thing. I can't think of what it's called. My mom has one, my sister has one. I don't have the canning equipment. I don't have jars. And quite honestly, um, I don't really have the space to store a canner thing or all the jars before or after I've canned the stuff. Um, but if you like canning and you're really into canning, of course, can the broth. That's awesome. It can sit and be shelf stable that way. I don't have room on the shelves to store canned broth. I don't have room to store the equipment. Um, and these bags and they lay nice and flat, freeze them like that, and then they can stack in the freezer or you can stick, get a rubber made container and like stick them like file way, <laughs> standing straight up in the freezer and just grab one out like you're pulling files out of a file folder. And it's a whole lot more um, space saving. So you can freeze it, you can can it, whichever way is best for you. But I hope this inspires you to not toss out things that you could put to good use for later and save you and your family a little bit of money. And you saw what that broth looked like. It is nice and rich. Look at that. Nice and rich. Let's just compare, let's see the difference. Wanna see the difference? Well, let's be fair, let's shake it up. Anything is settled in there. No comparison. Well, it's not bad, but still, free. Dollar fifty nine, dollars seventy nine, depending on where you get it from. Not bad. And one of these is a quart. Yeah a quart. So that would be two of these bags would be one of these. So when all said and done, I will have 12 of these worth or more in my freezer. It didn't cost me anything at all. Also, if you have an instant pot and you have any tips or tricks or recipes, please let me know. Comment down below or message me. I'm always looking for new ways to use the instant pot and new recipes to try. We get so tired of the same stuff over and over. So if you guys have any tips and tricks, I'm an open book. I would love to know. Until then, we'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.